welcome. Imagine looking around a classroom where all of your students are engaged and productive. This kind of harmony reflects an effective classroom management philosophy. As Maria Montessori beautifully said, the greatest sign of success for a teacher is to be able to say that children are now working as if I did not exist. Hello, I'm Marianne Busfield and today we're talking about uh, classroom management philosophy. So your classroom management philosophy is like your gui guiding light or your North Star. It's the compass for your approach to discipline, organization and a positive learning setting. It's not just about behavior management, it's about a holistic educational environment. So my kind of philosophy grew with me. I didn't really have a clue in the beginning. Uh, and uh, I wasn't actually all that interested in learning about classroom management philosophies. I just wanted to teach. So as you teach, though, I do believe that your philosophy will grow deeper and richer out of what you discover is important to you about teaching and caring for the students that you've been entrusted with. So your classroom management philosophy may not be a behavior philosophy, but it is your big picture or big idea for creating an environment that is effective for teaching and learning. So you're going to want to make sure it includes a plan to ensure your students well-being and to be able to nurture their personal and academic growth. So for these reasons, understanding your philosophy of classroom management means setting a foundation for an effective learning environment, ensuring student well-being and being able to nurture their growth. So this journey is unique and it evolves as you do over time. Uh, a teacher, a good teacher, the greatest teachers learn and grow every year of their teaching career. They are engaged lifelong learners. So while classroom management and behavior management are often used interchangeably, they aren't the same either. Behavior management is mostly focused on managing and modifying your students' behavior, typically through a system of rewards and consequences that you select and implement. On the other hand, a philosophy, let me say that again, on the other hand, a philosophy of classroom management is a part of a broader spectrum, including organization, communication, a positive classroom community, and social emotional instruction, as well as differentiated curriculum. So do you know the meaning of disciple, which is the root word of discipline? The word discipline is from the disciplina, which is a Latin word for instruction and training, which is there also derived from the root word disser, to learn. Hope I've got the pronunciation right there. But this is a really important one because we tend to think of discipline as consequences. And sometimes there are consequences involved in our being able to learn, but the root word of discipline actually means to learn, not to punish, not to give consequences to. So when we bring that into the classroom context or any context for that matter, the word discipline just means that when students make a mistake, it is our job to guide our students towards making responsible decisions. So your philosophy of classroom management sets the tone for how discipline is approached in your classroom. So step one is understanding what a classroom management philosophy is and is not. Step two is then going to be reflecting on your values because that's where your philosophy comes from. So that's going to be reflecting on values such as the learning environment, instilling core values and envisioning your teacher role. All of those are essential. Your goal is to teach disciplined living that benefits students far beyond the classroom. So I considered the following questions. What kind of learning environment do you want to create? What values do you want to instill in your students? How do you envision your role as a teacher in shaping your students' lives? And is it your goal for them to behave while they are under your supervision or for them to learn a pattern of disciplined living that will benefit them for the next 60 years of their lives? I know for me, the answer to all of those questions, and I encourage you to think about them. So now that you've reflected upon your personal values and what how you want your classroom and, and your teaching to shape and nurture and teach your students, um, it's time for you to craft your philosophy statement. So here's an example 
of mine, and it may inspire you, encourage you, give you ideas. I don't know, but let's go. My classroom management philosophy is built upon a foundation of a nurturing, inclusive, and student-centered learning environment. Each student deserves to be treated with respect, kindness, and empathy, while valuing their individuality and unique contributions to the class. My goal is to nurture open communication where students can safely express their thoughts and ideas. I also believe that a well-organized classroom creates a sense of peace and calm and nurtures student independence. Clear expectations and routines set the stage for effective learning and create the basis for the creation of the respectful, kind, and empathetic classroom I value. And uh, I would go back and, and just think about this some more and change it. It's not just the students that um, deserve those things. Earlier I said it's the students that deserve those things. In, in further reflection at this moment, I would say everyone, staff included, deserves all of these things because I'm going to be learning and I deserve to be respected. So in my philosophy of classroom management, discipline is not about punishment. Discipline is about helping students learn from their mistakes and helping them to grow into responsible individuals. I am inspired to empower my students to take ownership of their actions and make positive choices both academically and personally. Feel free to use this template to get you started and adapt it to your beliefs and styles. So what I just shared was uh, in large part my philosophy of classroom management. And there are others depending on your value systems. And um, so they're all going to sound different. So I'm going to give you another example just to see how they can overlap but still be different. So you might be inspired by Montessori's approach where students explore and learn at their pace. And it, you, are, you would be empowering your students to take control of their own learning. So if you reflect on Maria Montessori's wisdom on the subject of a philosophy of classroom management, uh, as I said, it's the greatest sign of success for a teacher is to be able to say the children are now working as if I did not exist. You as the teacher can empower students to take control of their learning. So that philosophy is short, it's sweet, and it's very much about following the leading of the students. And you may or may not agree with that approach, depending on your philosophy of classroom management. So we're at step five, and this is describing your own philosophy of classroom management. And when it comes to describing your philosophy, it means reflecting your passion and commitment in your philosophy. It's more than words. It's a vibrant blueprint for a learning community where every student thrives within a structured yet free environment. I understand that my philosophy of classroom management expresses my passion for teaching my love for the children and my hope and beliefs for the future. I believe that teaching is a privilege and a weighty responsibility. I want my philosophy to embody those beliefs. What do you want your philosophy, philosophy to embody? My classroom management philosophy is so much more than just words. I want it to be unavoidably evident that it is so much more than a room with desks and chairs when you walk into the room. I want you to see immediately that my classroom is a vibrant ecosystem where curiosity is nurtured and it blooms and where every student thrives. My classroom embodies a dynamic blend of structure and freedom where students are guided and encouraged to explore, ask questions, and take ownership of their learning journey. The power of kindness and empathy is evident throughout the classroom. At least I do my best to ensure these things. And each student is treated with respect and valued for their unique perspectives. And you know that that can be easier said than done. It takes a lot of work and intentionality about that. And that's the point of a philosophy is it's not that you're necessarily going to live it out every moment of every day, but it's what you aspire to. Again, it's that North Star. Stepping into my classroom, you will see that organization and clear expectations form the backbone of our classroom. Discipline is not about punishment. It is about guiding students towards responsible decision making and helping them to learn from their experiences. And there's a process that I have that's, I wouldn't quite call it restorative justice, but that's, it's, the intention behind how I work through problems with and between my students. In my classroom, we loved to celebrate the successes of ourselves 
and others, no matter whether the success was big or small. Uh, I loved it when we could learn from our mistakes, myself included. My kids heard me own mistakes and sometimes I needed to apologize and sometimes we just laughed together. We were a team and we worked together to grow academically and personally. My goal is for my students to leave my classroom, not just with knowledge, but with the confidence to tackle the challenges that life will throw their way. So I have a few more quotes for you to inspire and reinforce your philosophy. You might want to consider these. From George S. Patton, if everyone is thinking alike, then someone isn't thinking. So your classroom management philosophy does not need to be the same as anybody else's. Then there's a nugget of truth from Albert Einstein. Discipline is not about control. It's about teaching. And we also have the wisdom of Arthur Schopenhauer. Hope I got that one right. Talent hits a target no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. And for me, the point there is that I'm different. I'm unique. My classroom is going to reflect me. And not that I am a genius, but the genius that I bring to the classroom is my unique passions, gifts, and abilities, and they are going to be different from yours, hence the different types of classroom management philosophy. Allow your philosophy to reflect who you are. Then you'll give this, your students the best you have to give. And as Henry Ford reminds us, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Like I said, your classroom management philosophy, hopefully, is not a one and done. I am always reflecting on what mine can look like better. And I'm not even in the classroom anymore, but my passion for teaching remains. And so I learn, I reflect, I uh, self-correct. So when I took my ed degree, we were assigned the responsibility of creating a classroom management philosophy. And I'll be honest, to me, that was just a paper. It was an assignment. It was done. I never looked at it again. I didn't understand it. Um, and so your classroom management philosophy isn't just an assignment. It's a reflection of your passion for teaching and your hopes for your students' futures. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's kindle those fires of learning together. Okay, now, are you ready to take your classroom management to the next level? Download my free gift to you. You can see it on the far side of the screen. It's a free classroom management checklist to get you started on your path to uh, healthier, easier, happier, more satisfying classroom management. Use the bit.ly link you can see on the screen or scan the QR code with your phone camera or find the link in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please join me again. You will see some suggested videos on the right of the screen. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks again for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye now.